Will this, this, or this affect the life of your EV battery? And if all of these are bad for your battery, what can you do to make it last longer? Let's answer some of the most debated questions in the electric car space. Is rapid charging ruining your battery? Does winter and cold climates affect its life? And what about these other ways that can ruin your battery life? Well, to keep things simple, let's focus on one of the most popular electric cars on the road right now, the Tesla Model Y. It's a great benchmark because so many people own them and it's one of the most popular electric cars on the road right now. And it shares a lot of battery chemistry with a lot of other electric cars on the road. Now, the long range and performance models of the Tesla Model Y, they use nickel manganese cobalt battery chemistry, NMC, or sometimes NCA, which is a slight variation. That same battery chemistry is used in all different types of electric cars like these. So everything I'm about to explain applies to them as well. So with that in mind, let's look at what really makes a difference as to how long your electric car battery will last and how much control you actually have over it. So let's go over what's actually happening inside of your battery and why over time it slowly loses its capacity. Most EVs use lithium ion batteries and every time that you drive and charge it, lithium ions move across between the two electrodes. Over time, some of those ions get stuck, side reactions build up and the battery becomes slightly less efficient. That is what's called degradation. It's not instant and it's not dramatic. It's a slow, steady fade of your battery over time. It takes years, just like your phone battery, it will slowly degrade. But obviously with electric cars, the scale of it is much bigger and there are better ways of managing the electric car battery than your phone battery. And whilst that degradation will happen over time slowly, there are three ways that make it happen and faster. Number one is staying full too often. The NMC battery chemistry prefers to be in the mid range all the time, not too high and not too low. So if you're regularly charging to 100% and leaving it there overnight or at the weekend, that high voltage slowly stresses the cells. It's a bit like leaving a balloon stretched to maximum and expecting it to hold that state forever. Over time, it just won't. This doesn't mean you can never hit 100% charge. It's fine, of course, if you need the range for a trip. But if you do it every single day over years, it will wear the battery down quicker. Number two is extreme temperatures. Heat and cold affect battery life too, just in different ways. In hot weather, everything inside the battery speeds up. That includes the bad chemical reactions that cause long-term damage. So parking in the sun, charging in high heat or rapid charging after a long journey can cause the battery to degrade faster. In freezing weather, it's a bit different. The battery becomes sluggish, charging slows down, and if you try to fast charge when it's still cold, it can damage the internal structure of the battery. Number three is high charging power. Now this one gets a lot of attention because the question is, does fast or rapid charging affect how long the battery lasts? The short answer is no, not if you do it occasionally. But if you're rapid charging multiple times a week, especially in hot weather, and the battery is hot after a long drive, then yes, it could affect the degradation of the battery. The high charging power creates heat and stresses the cells. And the number one reason why they degrade, in my opinion, I'll get onto later. But first, let's cover how battery management has evolved from 10, 15 years ago to today. Now, I've got a bit of personal history with this. My first EV is this first generation Nissan Leaf. And back then, battery management was, well, minimal. There was no liquid cooling, no smart charging, no app to set a schedule. You basically just plugged it in, charged it, and let nature take over. And that worked at the time. I think the first generation Nissan Leaf was more of a, just a proof of concept car. And mine, despite after all these years, is still working fine. But in hotter climates, early Nissan Leafs degraded their batteries much quicker. And we're talking 30 to 40% losses in some of the hotter climates for owners over a few years. Now compare that to modern day electric cars, such as the Model Y, things are totally different. These days, battery management systems have improved a lot and they're way smarter. Here's what's changed. Number one is active thermal management. Modern EVs like Teslas, Hyundais and BMWs have liquid cooling for the batteries already built in. Meaning that of course, if your battery heats up, say it's a hot day or you're rapid charging, then the coolant will step in and cool down the battery pack and it will circulate the coolant just to keep it at the sweet spot, which is typically around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. The result is less stress on the battery and therefore less degradation. Number two is that there's built-in buffers and smart charging. Most newer EVs have a built-in buffer of the battery pack. So when it says 100% on your screen, it might not be real and it might only be about 90 or 95% of the actual capacity of the battery. Now that invisible margin protects the battery from what's called voltage stress. And that means you don't have to do anything it manages it all for you. Plus many EVs, in fact, even my old Nissan Leaf has this, where you can set a charging limit. You set it to a certain percentage and your car stops charging at that percentage when it reaches it. And number three is smarter software. 
Today's battery management systems don't just manage the charge. It constantly monitors the temperature, the voltage, the cell balance, and the usage history to optimize when and how to charge and when to cool down. It can even cut back on performance when you drive it if the batteries get too hot. But these are only in extreme cases because most cars are just normal and they absolutely work fine even under high pressures and load. You also get battery preconditioning now, of course. If you're going to a fast charger and need a rapid charge, the battery pack will be pre-cooled or optimized to be the right temperature when you arrive so it can handle the load of the rapid charge as and when you get there. That means it charges more efficiently and also much more safely and it helps make the batteries last longer. My Leaf, this car I'm sat in right now, has held up surprisingly well even without thermal management. It's got 11 bars of battery health out of 12 after 10 years and 63,000 miles. But that's why I bought it. It must have been treated well and carefully driven. No fast charging, maybe it was parked in the shade or not used much during summer and it wasn't charged to 100% often. But if it had thermal management, me and other owners wouldn't have to try so hard to manage the battery. And this is all thrown out the window in modern EVs because they're designed to make battery care almost invisible and not even needed. So if you ultimately drive anything other than a Nissan Leaf, you're probably just gonna be fine. But don't get too comfortable because even after all this tech, how you drive, store and charge the car still matters. So let's talk about that next. So what can you actually do to help extend the life of your battery? Let's bring this all down to earth with real practical steps that you can take to extend the life of your electric car battery. Number one is to store it correctly, even when you're not using it. Think of your battery like a house plant. It doesn't want to be neglected and it doesn't want to be sitting in extreme conditions. If you're going away or not driving much, leave the car sat at around 50 to 60% charge. That's the sweet spot so it's not under any stress. Avoid leaving it full or empty for a few days at a time. Both extremes put pressure on the battery chemistry. If you can, park it in the shade or even in the garage to avoid heat buildup, especially in the summer. And if your car lets you leave it plugged in at a charge limit, even better. It will top itself up without overcharging. If you're leaving your electric car for a week or two, no problem. If you're leaving it for more than a month, then follow the above tips and you should be fine. Secondly, Drive it smoothly most of the time. You bought an electric car probably because you like the instant torque and acceleration, which is great. And yeah, you should enjoy it. But if you're looking to protect your battery long-term, avoid flooring it every time you pull away. Drive at moderate speeds when you can because high speeds heat the battery faster. Regen braking is your friend. It reduces mechanical wear and is more gentle on the battery pack. Let the car warm up or precondition in the cold weather. It will run more efficiently and reduce battery stress. And also a bonus here, smooth driving means better range and better range means less often that you have to charge the car. So the fewer number of charging cycles that it goes through, the better. Number three is to charge properly. This rule is simple, but it matters. Set your daily charge limit to 70 to 80%. Many electric cars let you do this in the app or in the settings. Only charge to 100% when you need the full range like if you're going on a road trip. Try not to leave it at 100% overnight or during long stretches. Also use home charging or level two charging when possible. It's much more easier on the battery. And of course you can fast charge when you need to, just avoid doing it every day. Most cars are still built for it, so it should be mostly fine, as long as you're not doing it too often. If your car has preconditioning for fast charging, definitely use that. It will warm the battery to the right temperature before you arrive at the charger. It will reduce the stress on the battery and it will help improve charging speed as well. Number four is don't forget maintenance because yes, EVs still require maintenance. Just because they have fewer moving parts doesn't mean they're maintenance free. And I think this is the number one reason why batteries get worse over time. Brakes can get sticky if they're not being used because regen braking is used so often. Tires and wheels need checking too. Rolling resistance matters for smooth driving and efficiency. And also it's important to service your cooling system because with battery thermal management, your electric car will have one. Also it's important to keep your software updated too because manufacturers will come out with slight adjustments on making the battery pack more efficient. And of course, don't ignore your 12 volt battery because when that dies, your electric car won't be able to start. I'm actually going through a video on this soon where I do some maintenance stuff on my own car and also a little bit of an experiment to see if it actually helps with efficiency and range. So do check out that and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. And of course, don't forget, when a battery does lose its life, it's not the end. Batteries don't last forever. And even if yours degrades, you've got options. In many EVs, individual cells can be replaced instead of the whole pack. Plus, especially in cars like this that are older and are perfectly mechanically fine, battery swaps are definitely a thing that you can do with new, bigger packs offering better range and giving existing cars a new lease of life. And even when a battery can't power a car anymore because 
it's degraded too much, it can still be used in home storage solutions or in businesses for storing energy. And of course, it can be recycled with the materials inside. Oh, and on average, the batteries lose 1.5 to 2% every year in normal use. So even after 10 years, you're left with 80 or 85% of your original range, and it's still very usable. Final, final thought on this is that at the end of the day, time is the enemy of all of us. Batteries age naturally, just like we all do. Even if you do everything right, degradation is inevitable. But the good news is that it's slower than most people think. You have more control than you realize as well. And even if you follow just a few of these steps, the battery will most likely outlive and outlast the life of the car. If you drive an electric car, let me know in the comments how your battery's getting on, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.